Hey, we're so happy you found us online. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at Grace Family Church. We're a community following the call to love God, love people, and make a difference. We meet at four locations around Durban and at graceonline.tv. Go ahead and share this message, or you can download it and listen to it in your car or at home later today. Wherever you are in the world, wherever you're listening from, thank you for connecting with us. And may you be encouraged by the message coming up next. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome from wherever you are, are watching. Uh, my name is Wayne. I'm one of the pastors here at Grace Family Church, and it's just a, such a joy to be uh, sharing with you who are far away. A shout out to my friends in Pretoria, my birthplace of Jagersfontein. Uh, I'm sure everyone is locked in today. But we're about, well, we are locked in today. Uh, we, we're uh, day three, as you watch this, of the national lockdown. And I don't know about you, but I feel like the, uh, a little bit like the guy who fell off the 21st floor of a building and uh, as he passed his mates on the 18th floor, uh, he shouted at them, so far, so good. I'm sure it's so far, so good for you on day three. We have 18 days to go. Um, and I don't know if you anything like me, we don't know what lies beyond the 18 days. Uh, we don't know what lies beyond uh, this uh, pandemic that has taken hold of the world. And for many of us, perhaps it is true for you, uh, for many of us it might feel a little bit like falling. And months ago, the preaching team here at Grace decided that we would do a series called Falling Upward, How Do We Suffer Well? And it seems so appropriate that we talk about this. Uh, we would do this in the run-up to Easter where we meet the God who suffers with us and shows us His hands and His side, falling upward. I was drawn to a scripture written by Dr. Luke, and I thought, well, we're in the middle of a, a health pandemic. We should hear from the doctor. And I want to read from Luke chapter 8, and we start at verse 22. One day Jesus said to His disciples, Let's us go over to the other side of the lake. My sense is that we're en route to the other side, and we don't quite know what that looks like. Uh, it's a little scary. We don't know what the other side looks like, and it's scary also because staying where we are isn't really an option. Things have changed. The world has changed. Richard Raw uh, writes a, a book called Falling Upward, and, and uh, uh, it's a book for those who are heading to the other side. The context of the book is those who are heading into the second half of their lives, but it, but it is equally uh, applicable for us who are heading to the other side of COVID-19 and the coronavirus pandemic. It is appropriate for us who are heading to the other side, uh, uh, which is unknown to us. It, it, it's not clear what it's going to look like. He has a little bit of good news. There is another side. Uh, there is life after this pandemic. But we are so addicted to a way of life that it seems that it is the only way. And if we're to move, we need something uh, that, that, that has it all fall apart. We need something that breaks that addiction. Now, let's be clear. Um, God doesn't send suffering our way uh, to teach us a lesson. Let's be clear about that. The God who says, call me Father, and so many images of Scripture has God loving us like a mother. This God doesn't say, let me teach them a lesson with a pandemic. That's not true. God says, I love you. But... The suffering is here. And Richard Raw calls it necessary suffering. And for us, it may feel a little bit 
like falling. And as we fall, your soul, my soul, your emotions, my emotions are being expanded immensely even through the fall. And that's where we learn and we grow. I almost fell down the stairs uh, earlier on Thursday this week. Uh, I missed a step. The North Glen news reporter was waiting at the bottom of the steps. I clutched at everything I could grab hold of. But here's the truth. In the falling, my prayer life improved immensely. In an instant, I was praying, uh, Oh God, um, if we find grace, friends, if we find grace, if we open our hearts uh, to the power and to the love of God, even as we fall, we discover that even through the falling, we just get bigger. We grow. We find that in the falling and through the falling, we, we find that our lives move forward, our lives move upward, our lives get broader, we get deeper, and we simply get better. We're en route to the other side. Uh, the opposite of what we think when we fall is what can actually happen when we open our hearts and our minds to the work of God. We will beat this virus. We will beat this virus as a world. But we may fall in love with a different and new way of life. Forward, upward, broader, deeper, better. We're falling. We're falling. May we discover that on the other side, we have fallen upward. May we find the meaning of our lives in the falling. May we come out on the other side a little more grounded. May we come out on the other side less guarded. May we come out on the other side less self-absorbed. May we get to the other side having fallen, ready to give ourselves away. This is called necessary suffering, and it makes all things fall apart, and we discover that we fall upward. For the most part, we have already pushed off, and we're on our way to the other side. Let me, let me read on as Dr. Luke records it for us. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let us go to the other side of the lake. So they got into the boat and they set out. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. <laughs> Believe it or not. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. And I don't know if uh, you relate to the story. God appears to be asleep and there is great danger. The disciples went and they woke him up saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. It was a cry from the depths of their heart. Jesus got up and he rebuked the wind and the raging waters. And the storm subsided and all was calm. All was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. The coronavirus is as much, friends, an attack on our minds as it is on our bodies. And perhaps the natural response for us is fear. There is so much that we do not know. Things change week by week. It may feel like God is asleep in the presence of great danger, and the cry of our heart might be, uh, we are drowning here. Oh God, we are drowning here. As I look back on my life, as I look back on moments of deep suffering, times when I sat at the side of an ICU bed with children watching their father die, uh, times when I have presided over deep pain and anguish, parents have lost their children, when I look back on, on, on the time of my own father's passing, times of deep suffering, when I look back on that, when the question, why, oh God, is all this happening is loudest. The question always whispering 
through the chaos is this. Wayne, where is your faith? Where are you going to be grounded? Other translations say, why are you afraid? The message version, Jesus says, why can't you trust me? And even as I hear that whispered again, um, I'm reminded of my father's words to me years ago, saying, when all things are happening around you and things are not understood, underneath are the everlasting arms of God. Viktor Frankl, who lost pretty much everything uh, in the Holocaust, says, when we are no longer able to change situations, we are challenged to change ourselves. And the question, where is your faith, deeply challenges me. Viktor Frankl also writes in his book, The Meaning of Life, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So friends, in this time that is, that is like a storm and, and it's overflowing our boat, we get to choose while falling and in the middle of the storm. We get to choose faith over fear. We get to choose how we respond. We get to choose uh, uh, faith over fear even as we stay at home. And I'd like to share just a few thoughts about how we, we might simply choose faith over fear even as we stay in our homes for another 18 days from now. First, stay prayerful. As you stay at home, just stay prayerful. We are bound more powerfully through, to, to God through our needs we are bound to God through our weakness. We are bound to God far more through our unfulfilled hopes than we might be bound to God through our joys, through our successes, and through our strengths. When anxiety fills the sky with black clouds and a storm is raging, one word, one prayerful word begins to bring things into focus, and it's this, help. Help. When we have no other words because of the size of the storm, it's the word help. And as we say help, help, help for as long as we say help to the God who is in charge of all things. And our focus then uh, becomes connection rather than panic. Then we find other words, other words that speak our anxiety, that speak our, our, our disappointments, and that speak about uh, our, our hurts. The word help. We stay prayerful. Anxiety, friends, focuses on that which might happen. Our hurts focus on, 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 on that which has happened. Our disappointments focus on what is going to happen, what hasn't happened. But when we speak our anxieties and our hurts and our disappointments to God, because if we don't, we often blame God. When we do, we find comfort, we find strength, uh, and we find help. The word help is the door into the practice of prayer. And I wonder if we as a community simply said, Oh God, as the storm rages, all we want to say is help. And we find Jesus is in the boat. We come as we are. And he simply says, trust me. Trust me. So as you stay at home, stay prayerful. The second, stay wise. Stay wise. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. These are words written to a young man facing big challenges. We say, I believe in God, but if we stay wise, we can say also, I believe in soap. And so wash your hands. Stay at home. Don't touch your face. Uh, I found, uh, <laughs> I found chilies help. Touch the chilies and you will not touch your face more than once uh, from then on. But stay wise. 
keep fit and healthy. To my horror, my wife has downloaded um, uh, yoga stretches for the remaining 18 days. I'm going to come back limber. <laughs> but stay fit, stay healthy. This is simply stay wise. We stay prayerful. We stay wise. Stay united. We are fighting a common enemy. This is an opportunity uh, uh, for, for, to, to break the divisions. This is a chance for reconciliation and forgiveness. This is a chance to fix things. But we stay united. Grace Family Church, we stay united when we meet like this Sunday by Sunday online. We stay united uh, as, a, as a community when we do what we can for our world. Um, our team, you've heard a little bit of that. Our team are trying to uh, set up a pop-up pop up, uh, uh, shelter for those who have nowhere to stay. We have a drive through testing uh, facility for those who need to be tested. Uh, we are collecting and distributing with the Domino crowd, uh, the Domino community, uh, health packs for, for, for communities who are vulnerable. Deb Gavin of our counseling ministry uh, had a real heart to say, what are our, uh, uh, the people who are in the front line, what are they, uh, where are they getting help from? So uh, she put out uh, a call to psychologists around our country to provide psychological care for health workers who are busy in the front line of fighting this pandemic. And within a couple of hours, there were 30 psychologists who signed up uh, to offer pro bono free counseling for health workers who need it. And if you're a health worker, you simply email counseling, uh, grace, counseling at grace.org.za and, and, and you'll be connected with someone who will talk you through. Stay united. Stay united. Give and participate in the ministry of the church, whichever church you are part of. Simply keep giving. Stay united. If we choose faith over fear, we stay connected. Don't isolate your soul. Uh, we are about physical distancing now. I don't like the term social distancing. We are physically distant, but we are socially connected. We stay connected. Garth talked about small groups and meeting in all kinds of ways, um, but stay connected. I have a daughter in London, and we want to stay connected. FaceTime is a beautiful thing. And lastly, stay confident. One of the reasons fear is so high is that we're not in control. I don't know about you, it feels like falling. We are not in control. But actually, here's the truth, we were never in control. Jesus is, and he was, and he will be in control. Even the wind and the waves listen to him. His friends say, who is this? He is the one who is control. And he's asking you and me, where is your faith? Will you trust me? Just a few years later, as, the, as his friends um, uh, discover, um, as they ask, who is this? Uh, a, a few years later, they would be afraid in, their, in an upper room, all huddled together. And I want to read uh, what happens there. On the evening of that first day, Friday was the darkest day of the week. But now it was Sunday. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said that, he showed them his wounds. He showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw that it was the Lord. I want to read just so far. You see, the storm will pass. This storm will pass. And God is present with us in the storm. It's what the disciples discovered when they saw the wounds of Jesus. Uh, Jesus had suffered for them. But suffering did not have the last word. Death had been conquered. The darkness of Good Friday uh, was replaced by the joy of Resurrection Sunday. There was joy in their hearts. So friends, what I'm calling us to do is fix your eyes on Jesus. Choose faith over fear. 
Even as we fall, may we discover that we fall upward and we simply respond to the question of Jesus. Will you trust me with the words, we will trust you? I'd love for you to kneel perhaps just where you are. I don't know what the boat looks like that you're in. But I'm going to kneel here and we're just going to pray together um, a prayer of trust. So let's kneel together. Lord, as we kneel across the country and across the world, we simply put our trust in you. We say, help. Help us, Lord. Help. And even as we simply surrender all things, for we are in control of nothing, I ask, Lord, that your hand would be upon all those around the world who now wrestle for life. Bring healing, we pray. I pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. I pray comfort upon them. I pray for those who are working in the trenches and who are in the eye of the storm, health workers, psychologists, and uh, security forces, and police. I pray for them, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that in miraculous ways, you would do your work of love and healing in our lives, each of us at home, and in the world you gave your life for. You ask us, will you trust me? And we respond with, we trust you, Lord. Amen. Saying, I'm no longer a slave. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child.
It's been great to be together, uh, even as we have been apart. I pray that the next day and the next 18 days of the lockdown uh, will be for you an opportunity uh, to grow and to deepen and to explore your faith. God bless you and have a great rest of the day.